Hello everyone, welcome to Aptera Owners Club. Uh, I wanted to do a series of two videos about um, the environmental impacts of electric cars because I assume that most of us buying that are interested in the Aptera are interested in the Aptera for the environmental reasons, or at least that's one of the major reasons that we're interested in the Aptera is because uh, we care about the environment. Um, so one of the things that people that are against electric cars say is that you're essentially just taking the pollution from the tailpipe to the power plant and that the uh, the environmental costs of producing the batteries for the electric cars uh, far outweigh the um, apparent gains in um, environmental protection that you get from having the electric car. Okay, so what we want to know is basically the life cycle emissions of the electric vehicle. Like how much pollution does the entire process from manufacture to running the vehicle to the end of life of the vehicle, what is the emissions of that compared to a um, internal combustion car? So this is from the Bloomberg NEF. Bloomberg NEF is a... Um, a part of the Bloomberg Empire. They're a research group that just does analytics and white papers for um, corporations and countries um, to do um, research and analytics to um, for businesses and things like that. So they kind of have some future outlook. So what they did is they did some research and looked at battery electric vehicles and intercombustion vehicles um, through 2040. And what they this was their highlights. Um, if you want their entire thing, you have to pay them money and, and get the entire um, white paper. But uh, this is their summary. And they say that if you look at this graph, the the blue here is the, the greenhouse emissions associated with manufacturing the vehicle. So you can see that the vehicle for the internal combustion and the battery are pretty much the same because, you know, the chassis and and wheels and tires and all that stuff and the interior all about the same. What's different is that the battery electric vehicle has the um, cost of manufacturing the battery. So if you look at that compared to this, when, when they both roll off the line, the battery electric vehicle has way more emissions than the internal combustion vehicle. But this, this is the amount of greenhouse gases that you produce while the car is in use versus this, and this is for a car that's driven a 250,000 kilometers over its lifetime. So you see at some point, the, um, the battery electric vehicle becomes better in terms of an emission standpoint than the internal combustion vehicle. For a vehicle driven in the US, so that's with the, using a US electric grid and a US fuel system, it would take 27,000 kilometers. Um, that's a little, un, that's about like 17,000 miles, roughly, um, before it switches over. So that's the break-even point. At that time, they'll both, an uh, internal combustion vehicle and a battery electric vehicle will have the same amount of emissions. And then every mile after that, the internal combustion engine will produce more greenhouse gases. Be below that, the battery electric vehicle will produce more greenhouse gases. And that's because this is kind of a theoretical graph. So you see as distance tr is traveled, um, the greenhouse emissions goes up. And so here's an um, internal combustion vehicle. An internal combustion vehicle starts off with relatively low greenhouse gases, but the slope of its use as you're driving the car, it's less efficient. So it's going to use it's going to create more greenhouse gases while it's in use, and at some point it crosses over. So this is like an electric vehicle that has very low um, uh, greenhouse gases during manufacture. It's still going to be higher than the uh, internal combustion engine, and this is a high uh, greenhouse gas during manufacture electric vehicle. So one so with this one the break even point will happen sooner. So it'll be like right here. And this one, the break-even point would be much higher here. And so for the Aptera, we would expect the Aptera to be a low um, 
uh, embedded use because it's a very light vehicle. It doesn't ca take that much raw materials to make it. Um, the composite body uses less um, uh, energy to produce than uh, welding a metal frame. And the battery pack sizes are relatively low for the amount of range that you get for it. So you'd expect this. And then this is where the Aptera really shines. See, this is the, the slope is zero if it was um, producing no greenhouse gases during use. So it, theoretically, a pure solar electric vehicle would have a flat line like this. And then you'd have a crossover point with an uh, ICE vehicle that's very early on in its life. Um, but uh, the Aptera would probably have a very low slope like this. And so it would be, because it's very efficient and it does have some solar. So the more efficient the vehicle is, the slope of this line is shallower. So it would, it would have crossover much earlier. Now, the, uh, the thing that I wanted to look at the most is um, this is a white paper produced by the um, International Council of Clean Transportation. Uh, it's 86 pages long. I read the whole thing. Um, it's, it's really good, but I'll just summarize it for you guys. What they did is, it, it, it's the, this is the entire um, figure. What they did is they looked at the entire life cycle of the um, internal combustion vehicle versus the battery electric vehicle. They looked at it with the current technology and the current um, electrical grid. And then they looked at it under the conditions of um, what the technology would be in 10 years and what the electrical grid would be in about 10 years. And they looked at it in Europe, the United States, China, and India. Now, as you, see, as you know, the electrical grid and the sources of power um, are different for each of these countries. Um, India especially is very coal dominant. Most of their electricity comes from coal. China has quite a bit of coal as well. And the United States um, is moving more towards a cleaner um, uh, en energy grid, electrical grid, but is still not as clean as Europe. Europe has a lot of solar and wind and natural gas. Um, so their grid is the cleanest. So it depends on what your electric grid is, is composed of to, to uh, see how much um, greenhouse gases you will produce with an electric car. So you'll see here, um, the gray is the um, during vehicle manufacture, and the you can see that the battery electric vehicle is a little bit less than the internal combustion vehicle because there's fewer parts and you don't have to create an engine or a transmission. And then the yellow is the battery, and then uh, this darker gray is the um, maintenance, and you see there's a little bit less maintenance on the uh, battery electric vehicle. And then with a cl with a clean grid. Um, you have very few um, life cycle emissions. And then what they base this on is the average um, lifespan of a vehicle in all these regions. So in the United States, people tend to drive more, so you're going to have more emissions. And then you see that the, um, the fuel production costs are a little bit different. You see that the United States has a little bit higher fuel production costs of the gas car because a lot of our fuel comes from the tar sands of Canada and the tar sands of Canada around Edmonton are fairly um, uh, energy intensive to extract the oil from it um, rather than from other other places and then uh, the the US cars are usually a little bit bigger and a little bit less fuel efficient than the European cars. so there's greater um, greenhouse gas uh, consumption here. But as you can see from these things, and oh, also they didn't take into account any battery reuse or battery recycling. They assume that the batteries are going to get thrown away at the end of the life cycle of the electric vehicle, which probably is not true. That would probably, if they did take into account the um, battery recycling or battery reuse, um, such as in using like grid storage or um, like as a home battery backup battery, which uh, many um, electric uh, batteries could be reused for that, then um, this, this uh, yellow line would be a little bit less. So as you can see in Europe, there is huge advantages over the life cycle of the vehicle and they only get better as time goes on and the grid gets cleaner. Um, and in the United States, there's also a large improvement. And then in China, it's less of an improvement because their grid is dirtier. Um, uh, more coal dependent 
And then in India, it's not that much of a, of a break off. So if you did not take into account the cost of refining and extracting oil, then you could actually say that in, in, under India's electric grid that the battery electric vehicle creates slightly more um, greenhouse gases than the uh, internal combustion vehicle. But you have to take into account the um, energy costs of, um, of um, prospecting and drilling and extracting oil and refining it. And that's where this lighter blue comes in. And then in that case, you see, so India is kind of the worst case scenario for battery electric vehicles. Um, and even in that scenario, over the lifetime of the vehicle, you are going to um, have less emissions. And then uh, in 10 years, India is going to improve their grid a little bit and it gets better. China is improving their grid fairly rapidly. And so you see that in 10 years, they expect that it's going to be a lot better. Last important point of, of this um, white paper is that they did look at the greenhouse emissions of different uh, lithium ion batteries with different chemistries. And the three major chemistries are uh, nickel manganese cobalt. That is the uh, chemistry that is going to be used in the Aptera. Uh, um, they have multiple sources. The one that we saw in a previous video was the Samsung um, a 2170 cell. Those are nickel manganese cobalt uh, uh, chemistries, though they're the, probably the most popular uh, chemistry. And you can see that they are relatively, uh, these are all relatively similar in terms of greenhouse gas production during manufacture of those batteries. The NCA is um, nickel cobalt aluminum um, oxide batteries. That is the um, preferred battery of Tesla. So this is what Tesla was using until very recently. And then this is the lithium iron phosphate uh, battery, and you can see that that has a much lower, significantly lower um, greenhouse gas emission. So much, um, a, definitely a better one. And I think uh, Tesla is moving towards the uh, lithium iron phosphate. And um, it, it it's main the main disadvantage of lithium iron phosphate is it's not very energy dense. It's a little bit heavier for the um, amount of capacity that it has, but it is much safer. It has less greenhouse gases and has a longer cycle life. So I think that this is probably what uh, everyone's going to be moving toward um, in the future is a uh, lithium iron phosphate. At least um, uh, many, many uh, manufacturers are going to move toward that. I hope Tesla moves toward that once um, supply chains get better and there's more widespread um, manufacture of lithium iron phosphate batteries. I think there's a lot of advantages. And I just found out by reading this paper that this is one of the other advantages that the production of that um, battery chemistry is much less intensive in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. So um, now we know for sure, you can point, I'll, I'll link these um, things in the description below. And so if anyone comes up to you with the argument that batteries, that battery electric vehicles are not um, basically the cost of manufacturing the battery is so high um, in, in terms of emissions that they cannot be offset by the lower um, emissions during use and that you're just changing the um, emissions from the tailpipe to the power plant. Um, that is definitely not true um, if you live in Europe or the United States. And it it is it's still true even in the most dirtiest of circumstances, which uh, where almost all the power comes from the uh, least efficient source, which is coal. And even in that case, the battery electric vehicle is superior in terms of emissions over the lifetime of the vehicle. Okay, so that's it for this um, video. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear them. Um, in the next video, I'm going to talk about toxicity of um, lithium batteries because that, that there is something to talk about there. All right, thanks for watching, everyone.